The movie begins in 1999 in Sierra Leone, West Africa. A fisherman by the name of Solomon wakes his son named Dia up to head off to school. Dia aspires to become a doctor one day, and Solomon goes fishing to gather the food needed to survive. After he's finished, he begins walking his son home after school. However, they spot a group of mercenaries named the Revolutionary United Front, RUF, a group of rebels with murderous intent. This causes the two to run for their lives. Solomon hides his son underneath a boat and runs to his house. The rebels begin killing off anyone in their sights with no mercy or exceptions. Bodies fall, but Solomon manages to break through a wall and allows his family to escape. Sadly, he is captured, and he yells at his family to run to safety, which they do. Both he and the remaining villagers are forced to stand in front of Captain Poison. He orders his men to cut off the men's hands because their government is announcing to the people that the future is in their hands. To prevent them from giving their voice in the election, he just chops off their hands. When it's Solomon's turn, they ask him if if he wants long or short sleeves, and everyone laughs. As the man raises the axe, he is stopped. Captain Poison says that Solomon is a working man and orders him to be sent to the mines instead. At the United Nations, a significant meeting is underway concerning the civil war in Sierra Leone. The group discovers that the Revolutionary United Front, RUF, was the main instigator of the conflict. Their betrayal of the state had a dark motive, to take control of the diamond mines. The diamonds they mined weren't for jewelry. They sold them to buy illegal weapons. Though many countries had pledged not to buy diamonds from war-torn areas, the the illegal market found ways around these restrictions. Diamonds from these conflict zones were still making their way into the hands of buyers, funding more violence. Among those attending the meeting are Simmons and Van Diop, key members in the diamond industry. They are not just there as observers. They hope to play a role in resolving the Sierra Leone crisis. Back at the mine, Captain Poison walks among the convicts and tells them that the RUF has set them free from the greedy government. One miner finds a small diamond and hides it in his mouth, but he is spotted. Captain Poison stops everyone from working, and when he has the diamond handed back, he kills the convict, setting an example for the other miners. Elsewhere, a plane lands on the ground with two men inside. One man named Danny tells the pilot to circle back when he's done. Danny is greeted by quite a few men and asks them where Commander Zero is. Captain Rumble says he'll be dealing with business today to swap the diamonds for guns, but Danny doesn't agree. He hands over his gun and makes his way inside, where he finds Commander Zero. He asks him if he brought the weapons, and Danny says he wants the money first. Commander Zero threatens him, and Danny threatens to give the guns to the government if he doesn't fix up the price. He is then handed a massive handful of diamonds and is told to bring satellite TV next time for Commander Zero as well. Danny, with a few herders, travels across the landscape when he is stopped by the army. He pretends to be a National Geographic reporter and shows the commander his passport and other documents. The commander then begins checking the sheep and finds a cut on one of them. He slices it open to find the diamonds hidden there and immediately orders his men to arrest Danny. In the meantime, Solomon works tirelessly at the diamond mine. Coincidentally, he picks up a massive pink diamond but keeps quiet about it. When there is a distraction, he puts the diamond between his toes and asks a soldier for permission to use the toilet. On the way, Captain Poison sees him and checks him to see if he's hiding anything, but he finds nothing. In the seclusion of an open bathroom, Solomon rips his pants and puts the diamond inside, then goes to dig it. However, a gun clicks from behind, and Captain Poison orders him to hand over the diamond. As he does so, the government launches a full-scale attack on the rebels, and Captain Poison is injured, allowing Solomon to run off and bury the diamond. As he finishes, the army finds him and arrests him. The rebels and hostages are taken to the same jail where Danny is located. They chant, Ruff! as they're thrown into cages. Captain Poison is brought in on a stretcher, and when he spots Solomon, he demands the location of the pink diamond. This immediately catches Danny's attention. Captain Poison offers $11,000 to anyone who can get the diamond off Solomon. But when he screams back at Poison and shows his body, the other inmates leave him alone for the time being. The following day, Danny finds himself out of trouble thanks to a friend who bailed him out. He asks his friend to help Solomon as well. Danny then tells his man to call the buyers in London, but discovers they're not interested in dealing with him anymore. Back at his apartment, a frustrated Danny tries to call Simmons, but there's no answer. In a surprising move, Danny retrieves a hidden diamond from a hollowed-out tooth and leaves his place, setting a new plan in motion. Unbeknownst to him, an unknown man is following him and breaks into his residence. 
Danny makes his way to a diamond store to sell the diamond for some quick cash. Solomon is then set free and is told that he made a friend inside the jail. He is handed some money. Danny goes to a bartender, hands over some more cash, and is told it'll take a few days for his request to come in. He then spots a girl and joins her. She introduces herself as Maddie, and they have small talk until Danny realizes she's a journalist and swears at her. She chases him and tells him that for five years this country has had no diamond exports. She wants to reveal that Van Diop has bought diamonds from from Sierra Leone and is corrupt, but he brushes her off and makes his way back to the apartment, only to find it completely ransacked. He goes outside and spots an acquaintance named Cordell. The man mentions that Colonel C.I. isn't happy that Danny lost the diamonds. Out of nowhere, Danny hits Cordell in the gut and tells him that Colonel C.I. will have his money soon enough. Meanwhile, Solomon's family is traversing the landscape when the RUF comes racing in and decides to grab multiple kids, including Dia. The following day, Danny meets up with Colonel C.I. It turns out the government wants the Colonel to kill the rebels and take back the diamond mine. Funnily enough, the Colonel is also sending arms to the RUF and making money from both sides. Furious about the loss of diamonds, Danny offers a solution, finding him the pink diamond he spoke of as compensation for his failure. Later, Solomon is found by Danny, who asks him where the diamond is. Solomon says he's late for work, and as we see, he is working as a bellhop. Meanwhile, the RUF begins to brainwash the kids they've taken, telling them they will be the heroes the country needs, and that the only way to earn respect is through bloodshed. Captain Poison, still alive and well, approaches Dia and tells him that whatever he wishes is his. He promotes him to captain and hands him a pistol, knowing full well who his dad is. The scene shifts to Danny picking up a pistol from the bartender. He runs into Maddie once again, but the outcome is exactly the same. The next day, it is announced that the RUF is 10 kilometers away from the capital and that the situation is severe, with thousands of lives at risk. Danny finds Solomon once again and tells him that since he freed him, they're partners. Solomon initially doesn't want anything to do with Danny, but his mind is quickly changed by the mention of his family. The rebels are then seen approaching, and Danny yells at Solomon, saying they'll split the diamond 50 50ths and find Solomon's family. He agrees, and the duo runs off from the gunfire on the streets. Hundreds of people are dropping as they make their way through the crossfire of the army and rebels. Bullets and RPGs are fired, and the scene is a literal nightmare. The deafening, repeating shots of an RPG ring out, and eventually the rebels overpower the army in the conflict. The duo runs through a side street and finds shelter in a house with other civilians hiding. The prisoners are then executed, and the rebels kill anyone in sight, including the bartender. Danny and Solomon manage to flee the scene and decide to leave the city. They need to cross a bridge to do so. Danny poses as a convict and uses this disguise to kill two men. He picks up an AK from the ground and finishes off the third. They cross to the other side of the bridge and find a refugee camp controlled by the government. Inside the camp, Danny reunites with Maddie and shares some inside information. He reveals that the diamonds he smuggles from Sierra Leone are moved to Liberia through Tiara Diamonds. While Van Diop doesn't publicly claim ownership of Tiara Diamonds, they control it through tangled financial webs of cross holdings and hidden offshore accounts. In exchange for proof, Danny tells Maddie that she must help Solomon locate his family. She agrees, and they immediately board a chopper to take Solomon to his family. The chopper lands inside a massive refugee camp where Solomon's wife and daughter are located. However, they learn that his son was kidnapped. Solomon starts screaming at the guards to let his family out, but they aim their guns at him. Danny holds him back as his family is dragged back into the camp. Some time passes, and the three of them are back in the chopper. Maddie tells Solomon that they can reunite when the war ends. Now it's time for Solomon to fulfill his end of the bargain, although he is upset about his son's disappearance. Danny then has a conversation with Maddie, asking for her help to take him to the diamond. She is not convinced, so he enlightens her on the details of the diamond operation. He explains that when he smuggles the diamonds across the border, local buyers get them to a middleman in Monrovia. He pays off customs and certifies that the diamonds were mined in Liberia. Once they reach the buyers in Antwerp, diamonds are brought to the sorting tables. By the time they reach India, the clean and dirty diamonds are mixed together and cleaned up. Danny meets up with Simmons in London to control the supply and keep the demand high. They hide the diamonds in a vault to keep them out of the market circulation and maintain a high price. Danny offers her proof of names and accounts, which is
is detailed in his book. His only wish is for her to wait until he retrieves his diamond. With that, the duo takes off, with Solomon playing a cameraman and Danny a journalist. Not long into the trip, they stop for some photos but are attacked. They retreat back to the bus and Solomon saves a child's life. They continue their journey but are immediately attacked again. The driver and other journalists are killed. Danny takes over the wheel and manages to escape but a car starts chasing them. He drives through a battlefield and deep into the forest until the car crashes. They travel until the morning sun rises and a few locals appear. Initially, they almost attack them, but Maddie persuades them to take photos instead. The tribe leaders take them to their home, where Benjamin, the tribe leader, has recaptured some of the kidnapped youngsters from the RUF and is helping them become children once again. The next day, Benjamin drives the crew towards the colonel's base. Along the way, he gets shot by some young soldiers, but Danny keeps moving and makes it to the base. He unloads Benjamin to the medics and is escorted to see the colonel. The colonel tells Danny that his troops are going to attack the rebel base and massacre them, giving Danny enough time to find the diamond. Maddie's plane is about to leave, and she gets upset when she learns that Danny is going into battle. She bids farewell to Solomon and then to Danny, giving him her number and telling him to call her when he's in London. The duo then makes their way towards the buried diamond under the cover of darkness. As they approach, two carloads of people come near them, and they hide in the bushes. Solomon thinks he sees Dia and calls his name. The truck stops abruptly, causing Danny to grab Solomon and make a run for it as the rebels fire shots at them. They go deeper into the jungle and hide behind massive leaves, remaining unseen by the rebels in the darkness. The following day, Danny lectures Solomon on his foolishness and threatens to kill him if he pulls a stunt like that again. They continue traveling until they arrive in a shot-up little town where Solomon spots the RUF camps and wants to go and see if his son is there. However, Danny gets in his way, and the two end up throwing a few punches at each other. Eventually, Danny holds Solomon at gunpoint, but Solomon declares that he's already a dead man because he failed to protect his son. Feeling remorseful, Danny decides to wait until dark. When night falls, the two make their way to the camp for a quick look, but they don't find anything. The next day, they travel through various landscapes without encountering any conflicts or commotion. That night, they take shelter from the rain inside a cave, where Danny promises Solomon that they will find and rescue his son. Their journey continues until they finally reach a massive campsite belonging to the RUF. Danny decides to contact the colonel to bring in an attack helicopter, but Solomon insists that his son might be down there. Ignoring Solomon's plea, Danny calls in the cavalry, who inform him that they'll attack in the morning. As darkness envelops the land, Danny wakes up to find Solomon missing. It turns out Solomon has infiltrated the rebels and made his way into the camp. Danny decides to follow him into the camp to find his man. Solomon, unfazed, walks towards where the young men are and spots his son Dia playing cards. He grabs Dia by the shoulders to take him away, but Dia starts screaming, calling his father a traitor and demanding that he stay away. The other men in the camp hold Solomon at gunpoint. The scene shifts to a red sun blooming on the horizon as Captain Poison laughs at Solomon, stating that he knew Solomon would come back. Captain Poison orders him to pick up a shovel and dig up the diamond he hid. Solomon refuses and Danny watches the situation unfold from a distance. Captain Poison threatens Solomon, saying he'll end his entire bloodline if he doesn't comply. Reluctantly, Solomon finally picks up the shovel. Suddenly, an attack helicopter emerges out of nowhere and begins attacking the rebels, causing chaos and destruction. The rebels' bullets have no effect on the chopper. Amidst the chaos, Captain Poison runs off with Dia, and Solomon pursues them. Danny gets involved in the fight, while Solomon confronts Captain Poison. The scene intensifies as bullets ring out and people scream. Solomon, consumed by rage, repeatedly strikes Captain Poison with the shovel until he kills him. Danny continues to fight the remaining rebels, but spots Dia. He tries to help the kid, who runs from the deadly fire of the chopper. Danny manages to grab Dia, while the remaining rebels are cut down by the troops hiding in the area. The chopper lands, and the remaining RUF members are arrested. Danny greets the colonel, who instructs him to introduce the digger to him. However, Solomon remains quiet, so Danny takes him aside. Danny tells Solomon that if he doesn't reveal the location of the diamond, they will both be killed. Solomon still remains silent, frustrating Danny. The colonel threatens to use other methods to extract the location from Solomon. Dia is then brought to the colonel, providing enough leverage to force Solomon to disclose the burial location of the diamond. Solomon reluctantly 
begins digging, but Danny notices that the men are acting strangely. Aware that the colonel will betray him, Danny gives Solomon a meaningful look, and Solomon understands the message. Solomon claims to have found the diamond, and when everyone is distracted, Danny strikes one man and shoots the other two while using the first man as a shield. He jumps away and puts two bullets in the colonel as he attempts to shoot Danny. Danny finishes him off and instructs Solomon to keep digging. As they dig, Solomon discovers that he has been shot. Finally, Solomon finds the diamond but pauses as he sees Dia holding Danny at gunpoint. In a heartfelt moment, Solomon speaks to Dia, expressing his unconditional love for him, no matter what he has done. He assures Dia of his everlasting love. Moved by his father's words, Dia drops the weapon and embraces his dad. They are then shot at from behind and run off as fast as they can. Danny takes the diamond and calls his pilot, who advises him to abandon Solomon and his son. They make their way up a mountain, but Danny is severely injured and unable to continue. Solomon, with his heart filled with determination, picks up Danny and hoists him onto his shoulders. He carries him up the mountain until Danny asks him to stop. Solomon tries to assist Danny, but he insists he can't go on. Barely breathing, Danny pulls out the diamond and gazes at its beauty. Knowing his time is near, he gives it to Solomon, along with Mad's card and his pistol in case the pilot acts untrustworthy. In an emotional roller coaster, Danny tells Solomon that this is the end for him. He instructs his friend to take his boy home. Suddenly, they are once again shot at, but it becomes Danny's last stand to protect Solomon and his son. Danny shoots at the approaching troops, then rests his head on a rock. With only minutes left, he picks up the satellite phone and calls Maddie. She is overjoyed to hear his voice, but he informs her that he needs her to take care of Solomon and his son. Realizing Danny is injured, she pleads for him to send his location. As the plane flies off to safety, Danny tells Maddie that he wishes she were with him. He expresses his happiness at having met her, bringing her to tears. He says his goodbyes and ends the call, his body becoming lifeless as the plane disappears into the sunset. Weeks later, Solomon is in London with Maddie. She walks with him until he separates and a car stops beside him. Simmons jumps out to let him in while Maddie captures photos of the transaction. Inside the car, Solomon is offered two million, but he refuses the money. He insists on his family being brought to London instead. He exits the car with Maddie, content with the footage she has captured. A few days later, he receives a call to come to the airstrip. There, he hands over the diamond in exchange for the suitcase, ensuring his family's safety. Maddie captures even more powerful photos of the transaction, and the pink diamond is immediately taken to a vault. When Van Diop and Simmons return to their office, they are swarmed due to a book published by Maddie about them. The book contains all the details, including the heroism of Danny. Solomon is then instructed to attend a conference in London to speak about the ordeal and the corruption. As he walks in, he receives a massive applause from the crowd, and by the time he reaches the podium, he is greeted with a standing ovation. Everyone recognizes that a true legend is among them. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I always love hearing from my viewers, so feel free to leave a comment below with your thoughts on the video or any suggestions for future content. Once again, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.